Here is another thyroid. Notice that here is a nice cut section. About half of this cut section looks like fairly normal, beefy, brownish, uh, perhaps hyperemic or even a little hemorrhagic sometimes thyroid tissue. If you look very closely at these areas with your eyes, and if you're younger than I am, which most people are, you will see that you can see tiny little glistening particles. Those are the actual follicles. But you will also notice that about half of this cut section is replaced by a firmer whitish, perhaps areas of fibrosis there tumor. This may have been a palpable nodule. This may have been picked up on ultrasound or thyroid scan. But we are dealing now with a thyroid tumor. And we can make this a very, very, very easy case. Because if you remember, I told you before at least uh, 36 times that whenever you see truly papillary structures within the thyroid, you can call it papillary carcinoma. There is no such thing as a papillary adenoma. Perhaps there is, and perhaps some brilliant thyroid pathologists are brave enough to call it. But the fact is, uh, I don't know anybody personally who would have the guts to see even nice, well-differentiated papillary structures and call it a papillary adenoma. On the other hand, you can see that there are other parts of this tumor in which the uh, papillae are not very uh, nicely looking at all. Up here, you can see some semblance of papillary structures, but in areas out here, it looks uh, very uh, uniform, non-papillary. You can see that there's uh, fibrous tissue separating bands of this tumor. And it might be a moot point whether this uh, area here is infiltrating the fibrous tissue or the fibrous tissue is choking off part of the gland because it doesn't matter. What matters is that whenever you see papillary structures within a thyroid gland, you could call it cancer. Often some of these papillae dry up and form little uh, calcified bodies, which you can recognize instantly as samoma bodies. I don't see any Samoma bodies in this section of papillary tumor. Uh, perhaps we'll find one in another area. Here is another area. Here is that more well-defined area. Notice they are classical papillae. They have fibrovascular cores. They are lined uh, by nice rims of uh, either high cuboidal or low columnar cells, so classical for a thyroid type of epithelium. Notice they have abundant cytoplasm. It doesn't matter whether these cells have any nuclear features of malignancy or not, whether they have the or orphan any uh, cytoplasmic uh, inclusions, which you may see in these cells, or whether they look like totally normal cells because they're papillary, they're malignant. Um, I'm not going to be too happy unless I could find some Samoma bodies because they're usually easily found in papillary cancers, not only in the uh, thyroid, but in any papillary area, sometimes breast, sometimes ovary. And let's see if we could call this a Samoma body or whether it's just a dried up booger. Uh, here we go. We're zooming in on it. I wouldn't quite call this a Samoma body. It's just the edge of a papilla that's been cut tangentially so it looks darker than usual. I'm going to give it another um, try and see if we could find something here like a Samoma body and if we can't then you're just going to have to believe that Samoma bodies are generally easily found within papillary carcinomas of the thyroid anyway. If you see something that looks kind of dark and blue um, perhaps out here Maybe we'll be lucky and find a nice Samoma body. Oh, I'm sorry. We're just out of Samoma bodies today. Uh, but whenever these papillae would tend to dry up and calcify, and it does so in a situation that has kind of a concentric world pattern to what you could call it a Samoma body. But we don't have any here today. Thank you very much.